Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sujita Dakar from Nepal Live today. We have a very special guest all the way from UK, Dr. Matthew Offit. He is a British Conservative Party politician and he has been member of parliament since 2010. He is also a member of um, all party parliamentary group Nepal. His um, active participation to Health Nepal has never gone unnoticed and we are so pleased to have in our show Dr. Effort. I'd like to welcome you. Thank you very much, Sanjeev. It's, it's a great pleasure to be with you uh, this morning. Thank you so much. Um, as we all are aware that the whole world is in a very difficult situation due to the pandemic and the issue has been ongoing for a while, especially in regards to the vaccinations and the developing countries have not received enough vaccines till date. And I think you are aware of that as well. And your involvement to participate, provide vaccines to these countries has given a positive hope to them. So my question would be, what has motivated you to be involved um, with initiatives related with vaccine equality and humanitarian aid for the people of developing countries? Well, the simple answer would be that I have many constituents who have relatives, um, friends and associates in different countries around the world. Um, that not only includes Nepal, but also countries such as Sudan, um, such as people who have come from Iran and they live in different parts of the world, such as Albania, for example, uh, and even places uh, like Somaliland. And all these people uh, need assistance. And so my constituents have made representations to me. And with the government's involvement with the COVAX scheme, I've been able to make those representations to the vaccines minister and make the case on behalf of my constituents that uh, where we actually uh, distribute vaccines to greatest effect could be amongst places such as Nepal and I've urged the government in the United Kingdom to do just that. The UK government has announced anti-COVID vaccine support to developing countries and do you think Nepal would be one of them? Well we already have uh, assisted the Nepalese government um, the government of the United Kingdom has worked closely with Nepal and it's provided a range of support, including 260 ventilators, uh, 2,000 pieces of personal protective equipment, along with health experts. And these are all to help the, the, the country of Nepal to fight against COVID-19. I'm also pleased to be able to tell you that Nepal is receiving COVID-19 vaccines via the COVAX facility, which I already mentioned. The UK is one of the largest donations, donators to, to that scheme and it's delivered 1.8 million uh, doses to Nepal so far and there will be more uh, doses on the way as um, the United Kingdom uh, vaccinate more and more people. I'm very keen to see that the UK assists others in any way that it can, including by sharing the majority of supplies of our vaccine with COVAX. And by doing that, it does it in a way that it delivers um, where it needs to go, so it's most effective. And as I say, countries like Nepal are, are locations in the world where it is vital that these supplies are delivered. Recently, we had this G7 summit, which was held, I think, in June in Cornwall. And that included the discussion about ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Prime Minister of UK, Honourable um, Mr. Boris Johnson, he also pledged to work on global approach to pandemic to ensure equal global distribution of COVID vaccines. And in that regard, how do you think G7 countries, including UK, could support developing countries like Nepal to combat the devastating impacts of the COVID-19? Uh, one of the initiatives that came out of the G7 in Cornwall was that uh, the United Kingdom sought commitment from other countries, including the United States, yeah. that actually they we would secure vaccinations for countries that needed it. Countries that may not have the uh, financial and economic power that the United Kingdom and the United States have. And as such, uh, the other countries did agree to this request. And I'm very pleased that uh, over 1 billion vaccines will be going to what we call lower income countries across the world. And I'm very pleased that Nepal was named as one of those countries. So we can help and assist to ensure that the people who may live in very uh, diverse or even um, uh, displaced parts of Nepal are able to receive the vaccine, regardless of whether they live near the capital or not. So the G7 played a great part, not only for um, the coronavirus pandemic, but also for the country of Nepal. And I think that was a great success. And I came to know you had a plan to visit Nepal for Visit Nepal 2020. If this COVID is over, is there any plan that you would visit Nepal? Well, I've planned to visit Nepal um, since the terrible earthquake back in 2015. 
and circumstances always come and go and, and, and change people's plans. But 2020 was the year, the big initiative uh, of Nepal um, for the campaign to visit Nepal. And I know that many people, including myself, had intended to do that. Now, we know that that hasn't been possible because of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. But I'm determined to get to Nepal. Um, it is relatively easy to, to fly to India and then either to take flights or go overland. And I believe that it is a country of not only great beauty, of great people, but also the activities that um, tourists are able to engage in, I think make it a very uh, attractive location. And so in the future, and not only myself, I think that there'll be many other British people who will be very keen to visit the country to see what it has on offer. And I should be making my utmost to go as soon as I possibly can to finally visit the country that I have said for a number of years now that I would be attending. As I said, I would have gone in 2020. There's no doubt about that. But with what happened uh, across the world, that was not possible. But going forward, I would take great pleasure not only seeing the reconstruction following the earthquake, but also to see the work that there has been going on in regards to the vaccination program and looking after the people across the whole of the country. That sounds great. And I think it would be our pleasure to welcome you here. And Thank also, you. in the same context, I want to ask you something more. How do you see the prospect of tourism and investment in Nepal from UK post COVID-19? Well, I see it as a great opportunity. We already have significant uh, bilateral relations with India, with Pakistan and Sri Lanka. So very much within that part of the world. And uh, with so many diaspora in the United Kingdom, there are great opportunities for people to invest and to send redistributments um, to family and friends. And so the opportunities for trade between the two countries are very high. Um, Nepal has a very special place in the heart of the British public. Uh, we do not forget the contribution that uh, Nepalese stroke Gurkha uh, um, community have made to the defence of the United Kingdom and the interests uh, of the defence of the United Kingdom. And so there is a great deal of affection between our two countries. And it is one of those countries that um, people have not uh, visited or engaged in tourism as they have done in, in other places, such as India, for example. Um, but I think now people want to go to alternative locations. They want to have different experiences. And Nepal offers all of this. And it will be a great opportunity for many people in the United Kingdom to go along and do so. And it will be a, a great chance for the two countries to come together um, with a shared interest, both in trade, tourism, and indeed a, a common um, sympathy between our two countries. Coming to Gurkhas, um, I think the relationship between UK and Nepal is ongoing as strong as it has. And also the Gurkhas has been serving UK since 1800s, if I'm not wrong. Mm. There was a recent incident um, that was back in the end of July where um, ex two Gurkhas and Gurkha mm. widow, they uh, went on an indefinite hunger strike in London. What would be the message to the British government to help these people? I would simply encourage the British government to continue to engage with the Gurkhas, and I would certainly uh, continue with, you with my representations on the issues. I, I'm aware of the cases that you refer to, and, and I, I share the regard for the contribution of the, the Gurkhas uh, in the British Army, both past and present, uh, and, in, and appreciate the concern for the welfare on this issue. Um, I believe that they've supported us uh, when we needed help, and they should be fairly treated and the proposals that are offered should reflect their contribution to the UK Armed Forces. I'm, I'm, I know that under the previous Gurkha pension scheme, which ran from 1948 until just before I was elected in 2007, I always felt that was insufficient. And I was pleased that it was decided that the differences between the Gurkha's terms and conditions of service and those of the British counterparts would be eliminated. But uh, for Gurkhas who continue serving um, with those on service after July 1997, um, there was an offer to transfer to the Armed Forces Pension Scheme. But there was a cutoff in that, and the reason for this was that uh, when the UK became the home base for the Brigade of the Gurkhas, changes in immigration rules um, were backdated to July 1997, and that meant there was an increased likelihood of retired Gurkhas settling in the UK on discharge, and the then government were not comfortable with that. But uh, I have a different view. And as I said, I will continue to encourage the current UK government 
to engage with the Gurkha stroke Nepalese community. And I will represent the concerns of my constituents, many who were in the regiment, um, and represent their views on this issue. As I said, they, the, the, the Gurkha um, troops helped us when we needed them, and we should not turn our back on them when we don't need them as much. They're a great part of uh, the British um, military force, and uh, they are held in great respect by not only our troops, but also the people of the United Kingdom. In that context, I have another question where I see, since I've lived there as well, and I have seen how we have a broad community. The UK has always been a diverse uh, country comparing to other mm. parts of the world. So how do you see the integration of Nepali immigrant community in the British society? I see large communities in places like Aldershot. I see large communities in places like my own constituency in Hendon. And uh, the constituency in Hendon, the Burnt Oak Nepalese community, have come together over many years and they not only support each other um, through initiatives that help their children in their education and housing and other public services, but representatives of that community have become involved in civic life, something I've been encouraging a great deal. And we're very proud in the London Borough of Barnet, the council of where I represent, and we have representatives from the Nepalese community, particularly uh, Councillor Gurung, uh, uh, Lacha Gurung, who many people know, who uh, has been deputy mayor previously, and I hope one day he will become mayor of the borough. So he, he's not only taken the interests of uh, his friends and colleagues and relatives, but he's now taken on the mantle of representing the whole of the area of where he lives. And we're greatly proud of Lacha, and we hope that other people decide to follow his lead and get involved in, in civic life. For many people, this is not a great leap because the public service through the Gurkha community means that uh, public service is very important and helping and serving others is a mainstay of that. And we see more and more people getting involved in different activities, whether it be school governors or any other functions of local government uh, and rising their way through the ranks. And this is certainly a way uh, of getting involved in, in politics at a national level, emerging through um, the local tiers of, of local government. And I hope that more and more people uh, will see the, the, the lead by Lacha uh, and will decide that this is something that they can do for themselves to help many people, not just from uh, the Nepalese community, but from the whole of the community in the United Kingdom. The Pali community and UK community, we always had a close tie. I just want to know, how do you see the UK and Nepal's relationship um, evolving in the future? What would be your view on that? Yeah. I would certainly see greater opportunities for trade uh, and engagement. Um, the United Kingdom has left the European Union and we are accomplishing trade deals across the world. And Nepal will certainly be a country where I'm sure that the bilateral trade between our two nations will be very important to the economies of both our countries. And that would also ensure that the, the passage and movement of people between our two countries would be eased. And uh, as I said, not only would there be greater steps towards um, tourism to places like Nepal, uh, environmental, natural tourism, people are very interested in. Uh, it would be, that would be a great opportunity to bring more uh, currency within the country as people spend. And in the same as well, as people from Nepal would like to visit the United Kingdom, uh, and that would enable us to become closer as two, two countries and, and, and communities. Uh, I see there being different opportunities, certainly assistance through Millennium Development Goals, United Kingdom has an aid budget, which it does actually distribute it in places like Nepal, so that uh, the priorities of the United Kingdom, such as the education of younger people, uh, improving the economy and the workforce in countries like and including Nepal, are improved. And uh, that is of benefit not only to us, but not only to yourselves, but indeed to the, to the world as a whole. And that's something I believe that, that will not only continue to function, but will soon improve in the next decade. Um, coming to the conclusion of our whole interview, what would be your message to all these Nepalese viewers who are viewing from here and also from UK? I would say my main message is, is to respect um, the, the conditions that have been imposed on many people. That is to cover your face uh, on occasions when you are amongst other people, to try and social isolate, to keep your distance from other people, to ensure that the uh, pandemic doesn't spread unnecessarily. That is the big issue. 
and to keep washing our hands uh, and maintain safe distances. The second point I would say is that um, we are starting to overcome the pandemic in the United Kingdom, in other countries. And that means that once we uh, are able to protect ourselves, the United Kingdom will be able to assist in other parts of, of the world. Nepal, as I said, is one of those countries that uh, we've been very keen. The United Kingdom has been very keen to assist and we will continue to do so. Uh, and then we will be able to provide more assistance as less is needed in places like Europe. And then we can get uh, things like ventilators, protective equipment, uh, and indeed, most importantly, the vaccine to places that, that is needed. So people need to look after themselves in the short term. In the longer term, more assistance will be coming from all over the world. And then we can ensure that people are not only vaccinated, but we are able to prevent future pandemics um, occurring in the way that this one has done and ensure that we learn lessons from this to keep ourselves safer in the future. It was a pleasure, pleasure having you on our show. Thank you for taking your time out, giving it to us and giving your message to all the people out here. Thank you so much once again. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a great pleasure.